Alrighty then, obviously you can tell I'm still in the in the fighting mood. I hope you watched the match guys. Did you? Did you? <laughs> Great stuff. My name is Prosper Tarovinga and I'm hoping that um, I find you guys well. Um, obviously you can tell I'm still in the whole, um, you know, fighting mood. Um, I hope you also watched the match over the weekend. My job, guys, basically is to help you market, scale and grow your online business and I hope that in the next 30 minutes we will be able to help you actually motivate your cold customers into um, hot leads that are prepared to be buying from you every single day. Now obviously this is not my job, I'm going to have to take this off um, even though they actually make a lot of people a lot of money. But it doesn't work in my kind of work, all right? So, yeah, I can see Peter just tuned in. Uh, Charlie just tuned in. <laughs> exactly, I'm going to be beating all my prospects today and see how it goes. Thank you so much, guys. All right, so over the weekend, um, you guys must have witnessed the, um, the match that happened. And uh, even though I did not watch it, but I was listening to it, all right? Um, I watched how people responded to it. I watched the whole marketing and we were trying to reverse engineer it with some of my people. And we realized that what actually worked with that game was a lot of passion and a lot of liking of what it is that you actually do as a person. All right. So you would notice that a lot of people enter into this world of business because of a variety of reasons. And then they end up just, you know, trying to, um, you know, put out fires in places that way they did not even start off as, all right? Many, thank you so much for tuning in, all right? So for some people, it's the creative spark that asks, that gets you to start your own business. Um, for some people, it's the need for personal control. And for some people, it's just maybe the need for wanting a, um, you know, a, 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 to build a better lifestyle. Now, you really need to know why you are in business and why it is that you are actually doing what you're doing because that will formulate the foundation of how you treat your customers, how you actually get those customers, and how you, 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 you work with those people that are around you that are helping you build a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, um, Peter says, McGregor has it and props to him. He took and jumped... Uh, Oh, as a risk taker. Wow, great stuff. You are absolutely right there. Some people would have just let it be like that. But as a marketer or as a digital professional um, or as an online business professional that you have become, I know one thing for sure that your goal is to actually get more clients and get more customers and generate a lot more revenue. Now, this is what these boys went out and did, all right? They went out and they were marketing themselves, even though they were yelling at each other and all we we were hearing was, um, you know, them shouting at each other or whatever, but they were garnering, you know, people to trust them. They were garnering people to go in and, and, and vote for them in terms of betting for them and showing up for that fight. Apparently, they exchanged a lot of money after the fight. I am not at liberty to testify how much it was, but this has been one of the biggest marketing, um, you know, phenomenons that is yet to be studied and for people to actually find out what happened there. These are two people that are in two genres of a sport that have come together and made something lucrative. My own humble, you know, conclusion would be, okay, they came in and created content, all right? They created content of which us as people consumed. Now, you as a small business person, maybe if you really want to get more money, get more um, prospects coming your way, you need to figure out who else in your 
you know, network is already getting money from your customers? Who else is already charging or is already benefiting or profiting from your customers and try and partner with them and either create a product together or either create content together, okay? Because this is what happened. This genre is in our day-to-day -day, uh, uh, history or in, in everything else that we know would never have combined up until these guys decided this is what they wanted to do, all right? So if you look at it at that perspective that two different people came in and created content and we watched and we consumed and they got paid out of that. Imagine what you can do if you, co if you collaborate with people that are already getting money from your customers, all right? So sometimes we might be, you know, trying to go all out and, and, and do it all by ourselves when we can actually just partner with someone who already is billing our customers. Maybe you are a dentist. Your customers live in houses, don't they? All right? So why don't you partner with a real estate agent who has just sold a house to somebody who is in your area? All right. So it's 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 small things like this that if you are in tune with what you're doing and how you're working with it, it will be easy for you to actually figure out the lessons that come out of, you know, what we watch in our everyday life. OK, it wasn't just a boxing match that was marketing at its highest um, point. And I'm going to be sitting down and actually try to reverse engineer and see exactly how they managed to get that all happening. I see Peter Combe just tuned in. Um, Janice is saying collaboration is powerful, right? Janice, exactly. Just like how I wanted to collaborate with you. And I hope that we will get a time and a chance for us to actually do that. And thank you so much for tuning into this, um, you know, live segment of the show today. All right. So, like I said, our main goal as digital entrepreneurs is to figure out ways that we can generate more clients and actually provide a better service for them. All right. So if if McGregor didn't come up with whatever he did in order to 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 garner his side of 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 you know the competition, maybe people wouldn't have come to watch. All right. So people want to do business with those that they know, like, and trust. If you look at it that way, they already have a following, but that following was not going to do anything if they did not stop fighting each other. All right. So whoever is following you right now may not be, you know, stimulated to want to do business with you. But if you combine forces with somebody else who's already in the industry, you might start getting their attention. All right. Or if you start getting featured in podcasts or if you start getting featured in other people's, um, you know, um, blogs, et cetera, et cetera, you might reach an audience that had never heard of you. OK, so Peter says the bars and restaurants made so much money last night. The drinks never stopped pouring attraction marketing. Yes, sir. Exactly. All right. So whatever you have right now. Try and find somebody who can uh, sort of, you know, collaborate with. Find somebody who is also in a position to enhance what you already have. Because the only reason why we are not really getting as far as we want is because we're holding on to whatever business that we have. We're becoming just romantic to what we only possess and not knowing that Sally down the road is already billing your customers. All right. So that could be something that you could actually take from this fight. Instead of you posting and sharing other people's content, why don't you look for people to create content with? Collaborate with them. And once you've collaborated, look at what the magic happens. All right. This is something that we haven't seen in the history of marketing. And it came from people that are not even marketers. All right. So we need to really figure out, are we doing the right thing? Are we attracting the right people? If not, who is and how can we put them in to our, you know, our environment? OK, because if we are going to be going, look at me, look at me, look at me. We are born to contribute as human beings. No one is ever brought up to work on themselves. We like any other animal, we have to contribute to each other's success. So the more we are not helping another person to grow, the more we are putting ourselves down. All right. So that's why it's very important for you to find somebody who contributes and who also complements whatever service you have right now and figure out how you can cross pollinate their audiences. All right. Sometimes we 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 we, we go out there searching, uh, you know, for for honey, but we don't talk to the bees that are making those that honey. 
All right, that's the reason why bees sting because we're not negotiating with them. Okay, so you know, and, and, and any other time that maybe some people are out there, they're always looking for some sort of actionable digital marketing strategy that is willing or that is going to you know just change their bottom line. What are you providing? Okay, what are you bringing to the table? Ask yourself this question What do I bring to the table? All right, because if you're going to just be expecting people to give, 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 and you're not giving anything in return, then that's the reason why your bottom line is not moving. That's the reason why your phone is not ringing. That's the reason why you are not getting the right kind of customers that you actually want right this moment. All right, what are you giving in order to get um, whatever you are expecting for your business to be profitable and enjoyable? All right, in the process of all of this happening, do you know customers need to see you at least six to seven times before they even interact with your stuff when did we start you know hearing about these guys um you know um, as adverts when did we start hearing about it it was ages ago all right so at the end of the day when you are really looking at where your next customers are coming from, have you searched around the people that are already interacting with your content? Have you actually asked them what they want and what your service can provide and how you can actually solve their problem? Because sometimes we're just assuming. We're not actually asking the people that are meant to be offering their credit cards to us, are we? All right. So at the end of the day, we already have these things that are around us. We already have these people. We already have the resources. But I think we're still searching for that one thing. And you won't find it if you're not going to step outside of the frame and look at the bigger picture. All right. Now, Peter says, I love the people that I'm around with on social media. You're one of them. Thank you so much, man. And many Shamisha says, preach it. <laughs> oh, I wish it was just preaching. But you know what? At the end of the day, it is things that are around us we don't realize that there are so many lessons but if your mind is not open to see those lessons you won't see them all right there's always people that are creating content there's always people that are consuming content if you're just consuming and not actioning on that content you won't be able to see what i'm talking about this video might be boring to you and you might think it's all over the place i'm talking about boxing and now i'm here how does that all correlate all i'm saying is Figure out who is already taking money from your customers and try and contribute to them so that you too can be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Okay. You know, the reason why I'm here is I, I get, um, if this is your first time watching this, um, lunch and learn, it goes on for 30 minutes and I own a digital marketing agency here in Melbourne where I help, you know, digital marketers and other business owners to start scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Okay. And most of the time I get a lot of people asking me, how do I get customers? How do I grow my business? How do I, um, you know, reach out to people that have never, um, heard about me, et cetera, et cetera. All right. I want to tell you something. When I started my digital agency, I started off with zero. I knew nobody when I came here to Australia. All I did was became a person of value. All right. If you are going to give value to people, no matter how much, um, you know, how much time it's going to take you, no matter how much of it you're going to get and get nothing back, it will all start compounding and coming back to you. You've got to continuously create and relate for the people that are going to be paying you in the end. Conor McGregor or Floyd Mayweather, they've been laboring for years for them to get such a big paycheck. All right, all they got to do now is just blubber on air for 30 minutes and then they get such massive pages. But it's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes that we don't get to know. All right. So sometimes you might think that some people are just born with it or some people just roped up. But no, there's a lot of work that goes on behind. What are you doing to contribute to the whole ecosystem of, you know, entrepreneurship that's happening around you? All right, you can't just expect to be taking, taking, taking if you're not putting something back in there. You know, some people enter the world of business for a variety of reasons. And, and for some, it's probably because they're just um, I mean, very creative. But what are you contributing so that you can get that paycheck back? 
What are you creating and how is that relating to the people that want to watch that and what value are you putting, um, you know, out there? Right. Now, Peter says the grind includes the weekends, although rest is important. What do you think of people that work nine to five or entrepreneurs during the summer? What are your thoughts? You know what, Peter? At the end of the day, it depends what your ultimate goal is. All right. What what is your end goal? If you're working nine to five and it's working for you, I've got no qualms about that. I've got people that are working for me as well. All right. The end result is for people to be to, to live, to love and to matter. If you're not doing any of those three, if you're not leaving, if you're not loving enough and if what you're doing is of no substitute or, or substance to anyone else, then you're doing yourself a disservice. If you're living the life that allows you to be, do, and have all that you want, that, my friend, is what we all do this for, okay? If you're loving what you're doing, the people that are around you, and all the outputs, that also, Peter, should, um, you know, help you be, do, and have a life that's enjoyable. But if what you're doing does not matter, if what you're doing can be replaced, all right? If what you're doing is something that nobody really cares about if what you're doing has no contribution to society then you're not going to be fulfilled then you're not going to live then you're not going to love then whatever you do doesn't matter all right so i'm not here to condone anyone that's doing whatever in order for them to to have um you know a life that they really really want to but peter all i'm saying is if you can be do and have something that is that is worth something to other people all right. So at the end of the day, how are you contributing? Because that is exactly what it is that you have to do to society. What are you contributing? All right. It, you could be contributing being a bus driver. All right. Exactly. At the end of the day, all you really need to do is to contribute. That will then give you fulfillment. Then you can leave love and you, you do what matters. All right. So. This this is something that I'm not here to say my way is the right way or your way is the highway. But all I'm just saying is if you really want to have a business or a life that's profitable and enjoyable, you got to do things that contribute to value in other people's lives. That way they will then reciprocate that with, you know, giving you um, money or whatever it is that you're asking off of them. Because at the end of the day, some people are not giving anything, not even their time, not even a status, not even money to contribute to their Facebook ads, etc., etc. Okay, so that's pretty much how, um, you know, it works out. So once you have people that are around you, Peter, that are actually doing stuff to help you grow your business, where would you find your first customers or where would you figure out how can you contribute to these people so much that you will get a return out of it? Because whatever we do, life even re re requires an ROI, okay? What are you doing in order to get something out of your endeavors on online, your endeavors in life, your endeavors anywhere else, all right? Great stuff. And those that are talking about Houston, I mean, hopefully things are working out there. Um, you know, the, um, the floods might be going on well. So one other question you got to ask yourself. Um, thanks, Judy, for tuning in. Who are the people that are likely to buy from you? And how can you actually get referrals? All right. A lot of people are missing out on business because they don't have continuous business or they don't have a continuous flow of leads that are coming into their business because business are the life. I mean, leads are the lifeline of your business. All right. Now, where are you going to get those first customers and how are you going to bring them towards your content or the work that you're putting out there? All right. And how are you going to continuously sustain them so that they would want more from you, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so you might ask yourself, maybe I don't know people that can actually contribute to my business. You can ask yourself, who are your personal friends and their friends? How can they contribute to the growth of your business? All right. Uh, Peter, I, I don't know what you're trying to get at. Explain your method of leads on autopilot. I don't have a method of leads on autopilot, Peter. I actually go out every single day. You know what I'm doing, man. I'm, I'm, I'm 
creating and relating for the people um, that are going to contribute to 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 my um, you know business. All right. So I don't normally just leave things on autopilot. I actually do work, and I'm not sure where you want to get to with this. And um, at the end of the day, it's just one of those things. Can you? Um, yeah, try and figure out where you want to go um, with your questions so that I can answer them truthfully. All right. And um, yeah, just going back to what we're talking about today, we're really talking about lending your, um, you know, your, your, your customers. All right. You need to figure out the people that are around you. You need to figure out, um, you know, what, what connections that you actually do have that are also doing business that you can cross pollinate with them. So that's the reason why I gave the, the, the fight earlier on that these two people already have audiences. All right. Floyd Mayweather and um, Corda McGregor, they already have audiences that they cross pollinated and they made a lot of money with that. So you really want to brainstorm and find out who is that one person that already has an audience that you can tap into. All right. And you want to figure out also who are your business connections, maybe former people that you've worked with, former um, employees, employers or customers that are already working um, in, 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 in your business. Uh, or you've worked with before, those can also help you create content and actually reach out to audiences that you never thought existed. Okay. Um, you also want to find out what are your contacts outside of your own genre of work. All right. So you might be, um, you know, you volunteer at the Rotary near your place or you go to church or things like that. Okay. Those people can also help you, um, you know, figure out how you can um, reach out to other people. Peter says Facebook ads do work on business pages, not your personal profile. Switch topics quickly. Um, yeah, well, obviously, I'm not here for you, man. Um, okay, so you want to figure out who are your other contacts as well that, um, you know, in trade associations and people that you have worked with before and people that have actually had a business that you actually, um, you know, admire. All right. So what you really, really want to, um, what you really, really want to figure out is, are those people aligned to your work already? Do they actually want you to contribute with them and figure out how you two can help them? Find out what it is that they already need at the moment. Find out exactly what it is that they can, um, you know, you can contribute. And once you know that, once you can figure out who that person can be, it will be easy for you to actually go out and contribute to their work. All right. So you can maybe send them an email. Maybe make a follow up phone call and just really continuously contribute to how they can be of service to you. All right. So at the end of the day, I really hope that um, whatever you're doing right now, you are tapping into your audiences that you already have and you're tapping into audiences that other people that you know might have. OK, some people don't realize that the people that are around them, the people that we have in groups, the people that we have as neighbors, our relatives, all of those people can help you move your business. All right. So find people that are already collecting money from your customers. Find people that are already dealing with your customers. I gave an example a little bit earlier on that if you're a dentist, your customers already have houses within the area that you're operating on. Find out from the real estate agents in your area which people have just recently gotten a new property, all right? And offer them as a welcome to the neighborhood, um, you know, offer. You actually then give them something for them to, um, you know, you, you give them something to, um, you know, you give them a, a free, you know, teeth cleans or something like that so that they can actually uh, get to know about your business, etc., etc. A lot of the businesses that we're running, they're being run to the ground because we are not contributing enough and we're not reaching out to people that can possibly help us, um, you know, without, um, you know, us spending a lot of money on Facebook ads or spending a lot of money on, um, you know, just trying to reach out to audiences that we have not yet reached out to. Timothy Gentle, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So find out which of those people, um, your friends, 
um, and their friends. What are they already doing? How can you contribute? How can you be of value? Because you are paid in direct accordance to the value that you can bring into the marketplace. All right. So if you're not giving value, don't expect the market to reciprocate with anything. So ask yourself today, what have I done? Who have I connected with? And who have I been in touch with that can help you be, do, and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable, okay? So, you know, some of these things that we, 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 we might um, worry about or, you know, just really go in and try and, and get, uh, what do you call it? Just try and get some sort of a service or some sort of a course that will give you that one thing. Some of the things are in us. How much do you actually love the people that you're serving? How much are you ready to start creating for them? How much are you ready to start understanding what it is that you can actually do for your customers? All right, because these days it's not a matter of what you know or, or how um, you know, you, you're doing that. People want to see results. And if your business is not providing those results, if your business is not contributing to the greater good of society, a lot of people, it will be difficult for people to see. All right. So if you're just tuning in, we're talking about how you can actually just tap into whatever, um, you know, um, audiences you already have and also audiences of people that might seem as your competitors, but you can actually then create something that is actually uh, meaningful for yourself. And as uh, people are saying, you can ask for referrals and their references. And Robert says, hi, Sean. Um, it's a big love for your friends that I'm doing. And yes, I know, Robert, you have a really big audience that follows you through. Okay, so if this is your first time also tuning in, what we're really, really talking about is once you start creating content that educates your customers, you educate them and engage them on what exactly you will be offering them and essentially providing value, all right? And that leaves you positioned as a person that, um, you know, can solve their pain and you've got products that can help them, all right? And it's easier to convert once people already know, like, and trust you. All right. It takes up to six to seven times, like I continuously say, for anyone to actually, um, you know, realize that you're the person that can help them with their business. OK, so some people are just really watching. They still may be a little bit cold. They still maybe um, haven't heard about your business. So at any point in time in your business, you're going to have cold. You're going to have warm and hot prospects. Now, for you to bring those people to convert and become your customers, all right, you're moving them through a sales cycle. You can do that through content. And like I've been saying, you really need to figure out if you can't provide the content, find who you can collaborate with. All right. So, you know, as you would know already, you know, cold prospects. They know very little about your company. The only way you can get them to understand what it is that you do is by educating them and providing them with value. It takes a while for somebody to actually then start knowing that you're the person that can uh, help them solve their problems. Okay. And once they enter that sales cycle, it's now easy for you to sort of mix it up. You're warming them up. They're getting to know who you are. You're exposing them to your marketing messages. And then, you know, all those prospects, um, you know, you're now using all your sales tactics and, um, you know, just pretty much providing them with value that can help them, um, you know, with whatever your service is going to be providing. All right. So sometimes people don't realize that you can actually mix it all up. There's no surefire way that's designed to, you know, say, if you do this, this is what is going to work. You really have to want it. You really have to be passionate about your business. You really have to want to try and experiment. And whatever works with you, you keep it going. And whatever doesn't, you know, you let it go. Because, you know, people enter into the world of business for, for a lot of different reasons. And, you know, some are just there for just being creative. But they're forced to then want to become a business because, yes, bills have to be paid. And 
some just need to have personal control as to how you know they want their business run and some want commercial success or to create a better lifestyle now you decide what you are in business for that way it will also just you know determine how you put out your content who you talk to and how you reach out to those people because if you're just in it for the money you will find out that everything that you do is not going to work okay you'll find out that you will soon quietly exit that business hopefully without any financial constraints all right and maybe you might just remain committed but if you your heart is in it do you know what i mean you're contributing and you're creating content just like what um we just saw on the weekend two different people that just came together and contributed to um creating content that has now become a masterpiece all right find people around you already and just really really connect with them okay well hopefully this um show has been a really good one um i've got work to do i've got people to reach out for and as you would know if anything i can be do um for your business to help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable please do not hesitate to get in touch in the meantime thank you so much for tuning in guys